What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, Blue. Welcome back to Train Sim World 2. And today, we'll be operating this AC4400 diesel locomotive on Union Pacific's famous Cane Creek subdivision. So empty freight cars just arrived here in Potas for us to load. Then we'll run them through the Seven Mile Canyon and up the line to Thompson. We got a lot of work to do, so let's get started. All right, welcome to Cane Creek, ladies and gentlemen. We haven't even got started, and I can already tell it's freaking Gorgeous. Wow. It looks so good. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and get the locomotives set up. We'll start with the one in the rear. So we'll run back here, hop up the stairs for the uh, lead, or sorry, the rear locomotive. Open up this door. And uh, one thing we want to do is want to check the brakes and make sure that the uh, switches are all off. So I'm going to go down here and click on the control pump, turn it off, engine run, turn that off. And we'll get up, go to the screens. There we go, and make sure that these are all set up. So we'll go to air brakes. They need to be a cut out for the uh, the trailing locomotive, and they already are. So cut out and trail, that's how it needs to be. So it's already set up correctly so by default, which is nice. Let's go ahead and go back to the leading locomotive. So we'll run up there and get that one started. We'll jump down here, hop back up here. I'm not sure what's faster, going through the bridge or taking up down route, not sure. We'll open up the door as you can see i definitely have the dirty livery uh, i believe trains should be dirty as well and all right so hop in the engineer seat and there we go so let's go ahead and turn the front headlights on we'll go over here to the same panel we just went to in the uh trailing locomotive and turn on the general field switch all these three switches need to be turned so on we'll go to our screen here go to air brakes and we'll click on cut in so we want this to be to cut in for the auto brake because that's f3 and f4 cut in and lead that's what we want and we'll hit save make sure you save or it will not do anything you can actually hear the brakes starting to kind of kick in there we'll go to f8 to exit and something else we're going to use is the speed control uh because we're about to be loading these empty freight cars i think there's let's see there is two 27 of them right now we're 1083 tons empty and we're 546 yards long so that is what the uh, setup is and we go to slow speed and honestly for loading uh we're probably going to want to be pretty darn slow so i'm gonna click on six here again these buttons kind of match what's on the screen it's not a touch screen it's just you gotta click the button that matches it so i'm gonna go down to like two i don't think we want to go any faster than two miles per hour now yeah i know that sounds extremely slow uh but that's what we're gonna have to do so uh we'll leave it there on this screen let's go ahead and get the locomotive going we're gonna release the automatic brake let's get back to the main screen here at least the automatic brake make sure the independent brake is also off and we'll put the reverser in four so that's the forward here on the reverser it's already in Red handle come back for release, independent back for release, and we should start rolling here in just a second. We'll give it a little bit of power to help us get going. As you can see on the top right as well, I'm getting really good frames, at least at the beginning of this scenario. And we have power. We're rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it. All right, so I believe the uh, the place we'll be doing the loading is right up ahead of here. I think it might be on this track. Let's do a double check. Go to nine, and yes, the tracks are set correctly. We'll go right in there here. Get these babies loaded. Now the challenge here is you can see we're on a negative five percent downhill slope or gradient, and I don't know. I mean, on Clinchfield, there's a lot of gradients on that on that route, and I feel like I got pretty good at managing. But this is a whole different type of train, a different era even. Sorry. All right, now I'm already at idle, and I'm, I'm using <laughs> brakes to keep our speed down. We'll use the independent brake, at least for now, and I have to play with that. I don't want to use the automatic brake, because that's going to send uh, air brakes all the way down the length of the train, and I don't want to do that just yet, so we'll use the independent brake to kind of manage our speed to stay here below 10 miles per hour. All right, we are just under 50 yards from the loading point, and uh, you can hear the brakes squealing as we get down to two miles per hour. And I think that was around 20% braking. I don't want to stop completely, uh, but I don't want to approach too fast. I'm gonna go ahead and go to speed control here, and we're gonna get this slow speed control turned on. Click on F2, target speed two miles per hour. F1 is gonna turn that on. 
and we'll see a little blue line there trying to control our speed now i want to give it some break as well because i don't think i think it it adds like um i think it does do some 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 dynamic braking a little bit on its own with the speed control but i don't think it's going to be enough on this a negative 0.8 percent gradient and the gradient might actually increase even more than that so we'll have to see what happens as we go in so now we're gonna be going to load the aggregates so let's try to keep our speed down as slow as possible all right here comes the first aggregate let's see if i can get it loaded right now we're at 1.8 uh, miles per hour there it is it's getting started i have a little bit of break in i have the speed control on we'll see if it'll get to 100 percent hopefully it will uh, if it does, that means that we're at the right speed. And 97%. Oh, man. So close. I'm about to back it up and bring it back in to get that fully loaded. So, independent brake. All right, now we got that first freight car 100% full. I had to reverse to kind of get that fixed. Uh, but now we got the slow speed control set to 1.4 miles per hour. Yes, extremely slow. Uh, plus about 18% independent brake. This so far seems to be possibly a sweet spot for me uh, but that's gonna change as the train gets loaded it's actually gonna become heavier and we have to apply more brake uh, to keep the train from moving and we have about what was it 47 freight cars behind us or something like that um, so it's gonna be sorry I mean 27 freight cars behind us so trying to hold all that coal or whatever it is we're putting in here is, is gonna be challenging to hold the brakes down one thing I want to point out that I'm not a huge fan of uh, as we uh, watch these go in, is I don't I don't know I, I mean I know that this is a new style of I guess you call it aggregate or whatever um, or a freight car with the top on it, but it's kind of weird loading these. It kind of breaks the immersion, the fact that these are completely covered, uh, and yet we're still somehow loading into it, right? Like if like if they're supposed to be a hole, then then put a hole there, right? Let's add a little bit more break here. Uh, but if there's not, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's, it's really weird. Uh, the fact that we're loading cars and just spraying this <laughs> material on top of it and uh, pretending like it's full. Um, I would rather this had an open top if we're going to do this type of scenario. So the goal here is to get all of these loaded up to 100%. If you miss one, you will have to reverse like I had to do earlier. Uh, but it's going to be a very slow process. I'm not going to make you wait and wait through it so I'll see you once we get it done loaded all right finally we are loading the final freight car this is the 27th and final freight car so now it wants us to stop at potash track and uh, it took a little bit of time to get that done <laughs> to be honest with you it took a little bit of time let's go ahead and hop back in the front we'll release the, the brakes completely actually what first what we'll do is we'll turn off the slow speed control on f1 there and then i'll release the independent brakes i got our brakes all the way up to around i don't know 35 almost 40 percent on the independent i did not use the automatic brake i only used the independent i'm not sure if that's the right thing to do in real life but that's what i did um you can see we're on a 0.1 percent gradient uh negative it's not that bad anymore but it got very difficult if i go to here you'll see uh now we're at, uh 2000 tons heavier yeah so 3565 tons now is how much we have we are weighing with uh, those freight cars fully loaded now. So we got about 900 yards we go. We got to give a little bit of power. stops right up ahead let's go ahead and uh, add the automatic brake in to get us to a full stop here hear the brakes squeaking screeching to a halt and there we go independent brake full all right not too bad i believe i saw one of those little uh signs that we can set up let's go down here real quick Just behind us. The brakes are set. There's no trains coming. We're good to go. And believe we can go ahead and uh, 
There it is. Point of interest board found. So we are at uh, Potash, and our next stop is Thompson. Got a long way to go. Let's get it. All right, the whole train has been checked. Let's go ahead and put it back in forward. We will release the automatic brakes. We're on a pretty even uh, gradient right now. There's no uh, elevation changing happening right now, so we're okay. So let's let the brakes release. We'll start giving it power as we get moving forward. We have a 30 mile trip uh, over to, uh, I believe, Thompson. If you look at, take a look at the map. We're down here towards the south at Potash. We're going through the uh, beautiful seven mile canyon here and then through the long straight up to Thompson. It's going to be a pretty interesting drive. I haven't driven this whole route yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, and I'm going to kind of cut it down to bite sized pieces for you guys um, from here on out. Let's go ahead and add some more power. We will release the independent brake and we'll get going. Honk the horn. And we're off. Speed limit right now is looks to be about just under 10 miles per hour, I believe. I did an interview uh, with We Are Rail fans, and I, I mentioned in that interview that I uh, didn't really grow up around a lot of trains. I don't have access to a lot of trains in real life. It's always been quite a mystery uh, to me. Uh, when I was younger, I did see a few trains here and there whenever I would visit my parents' family uh, or their cousins and things like that. They live close to like Amtrak and things. Uh, but we never really got to see trains. I never really got to be on a train. And but recently I went on a trip to Colorado and I got the chance to get pretty up and close and personal with a Union Pacific uh, train. I think it was an AC 4400, I believe. Uh, just kind of randomly, we were driving to some place and we went across some railroad tracks. There was no like you know railroad crossing, uh, you know, sign or anything like that. Kind of one of those those cross crossings that doesn't have a stop. Like you just have to enter at your own risk. But Basically, uh, I um, was like, you know what, I'm going to take this opportunity to uh, take some pictures. <laughs> so uh, there was nobody in it. I guess it wasn't in service. It was on, uh, but it wasn't moving. The signal was red. You know, I kind of went through all those uh, signs to see if, if it was actually moving or anything like that. So I went up right in front of it, took some pictures of it, and took some pictures on the tracks. And it was pretty cool uh, being able to get that close. And I was like, oh, man, with the Cane Creek coming out soon, it's really nice to be able to get close and, and kind of see one in person and, and I can actually be able to compare what it looks like in real life to you know what it looks like in this sim so uh, pretty cool we're really glad to finally get some American freight more American freight trains uh, to train sim world too uh, I don't believe either of the trains that are a part of this DLC are actually uh, new they're just kind of reskinned and changed up just a little bit modified I guess you could say um, there's no special sounds uh which has been a huge swing and a miss for dovetail as a whole now i know this route was not made by dovetail made by skyhook but still um i think isle of white was one of like i know they made a really nice sound pack for their um for their mod and i actually was very impressed by it uh but it just feels like a lot of it's kind of going downhill i really haven't seen any good uh, sounds come with any of these DLC packs, which is pretty sad because in real life, uh, the AC4400 and the SD40, you know, they sound, they have a very authentic, distinct sound when they drive by, when you're driving in them. And I would love to get some better, high quality sounds, uh, not just for these trains, but for, you know, for all trains across the board. I know they're working on it, but it's definitely, for me, it's, I'm a, I'm a big sound guy. You guys saw my recent, um, I think it was Canadian Pacific or Canadian National um, AC4400 train video that I did and how I was just praising how well they did with the sounds. It just sounds amazing. Definitely check out that video if you have the chance. Wow, look at these mountains out here. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if they gotta get that developer out <laughs> and maybe they can help them um, because it's a very similar train. Um, I feel like those sounds be much better than the default. Now, I'll say this, the default sounds are not the worst. All right, now some of you guys may disagree with me. Matter of fact, speaking of sounds, you hear that? 
to hear it is loud. It sounds like I'm in New York all, all of a sudden. Uh, this is a part, maybe it's a bug, I don't know. Uh, but this is a part of the Cane Creek add-on where for whatever reason they decided to put in like rushing traffic at like 500 <laughs> decibels. Um, and you're not even near, I mean it's like one car next to us. So they definitely need to turn that sound down because it's really immersive breaking. Um, I've seen other people complain about it as well, and it's it's pretty annoying, to be honest with you. Uh, the horn. You know, it's okay. It's not the best, but it's not bad. I can deal with it. It, it really doesn't ma bo bother me that bad. Um, I'll tell you, the Clinchfield Railroad sounds, those sounds really bothered me. Uh, I really enjoyed that route. Matter of fact, that's probably one of my favorite freight routes. We'll see about this one. Um, I gotta actually, you know, finish a Cane Creek, uh, a full Cane Creek route before I can say whether or not I like King Creek better than Clinchfield um, but um, sounds in Clinchfield were extremely lacking I was very disappointed in the sound uh, of, of it but I really loved the scenarios I really loved the the, the route the scenery I, I was it became very quickly my favorite freight route so I'm hoping I'm really hoping that King Creek uh, will take the place of my favorite freight route for train sim world uh, i have a lot of really fun and uh you know recommended and even my favorite freight routes on train simulator um including canadian national the tichapi pass is super dope um but you know it's kind of been lacking for sure for train sim world so hopefully um more developers or even train sim world dovetail themselves will continue to create more uh really cool uh, routes like this and I like this because it's different it's not just driving through a boring area it's r really freaking interesting look at these mountains man they look incredible they look amazing like that's really the highlight of this route and this livery is also an amazing livery <laughs> I love it I love it I love it but yeah going now through the seven mile canyon I believe is what they call this and I think that on our right might be the Colorado River. Uh, I could be incorrect. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Speed limit right here it was pretty even. I'm surprised we're not going up or down uh, in a you know in a steep slope or anything. But it's not just yet. But this looks very very nice indeed. Yeah, this is the section of track I was really looking forward to is this part right here. I'm telling you, it's really, you really can't appreciate this route as much from the inside of view. Like, I find myself spending a lot more time on the exterior view than normal. Look at that drop off on the right side as we go through the canyon. Just beautiful, man. The only thing we need is, okay, not the only thing besides the sound, but we also need longer trains, I believe. The max was like maybe 40 or something. I, I could be wrong. Please don't quote me on that. But uh, right now we only have 27 free cars behind us. Imagine if we had like five times like 100, like 100 free cars behind us. A long snake train. That'd be freaking incredible. I do like the lighting here on Cane Creek and just the, the, the whole vibe. You know, it's very different than any other route. Uh, that we've driven on train sim world. The rest of them are mostly green, uh, you know, kind of bright colors. A lot of them are in Europe, you know. Uh, some of them are urban, underground, but we haven't had a route like this on train sim world yet. I mean, even, you know, the, uh, the Canadian route is still kind of green, you know. Look at that over there on the left, that big arch, that big arch rock over there. All right, we are approaching our first tunnel. I was wondering if there was any tunnels on this route, and there are. 
our lights I do believe are on might get dark in here though I don't think I have any desk lights on oh yeah nice and dark pretty long tunnel it looks like too one thing I always do when I drive on train sim world is I do the tunnel horn test because as you guys know if you honk a horn or make any noise in a tunnel it sounds quite different than if you were to do it outside of the tunnel and uh, sadly this horn test failed it uh, is basically the exact same sound as if we were not in a, in a tunnel so uh, sad day I'll say this man when it comes to routes that do a very good job at sound uh, I point to Peninsula Corridor uh, I, I was extremely impressed by the baby bullet sound the uh, the freight train on the Peninsula Corridor, corridor as well the, the train sounded amazing I was kind of hoping they would pull some sounds from over there and uh, to use on this route because I was really impressed by those and there are some other routes that have really good sounds I don't want to just <laughs> haunt them about sound I'm just saying that's my personal uh, request is just to have all around better sounds and all the locomotives but again I know it's pretty difficult to do that uh, especially with COVID and, and you got to get your hands on the train and bring out very expensive sound equipment to do the recordings you know um, but I think this is another thing where you can really allow the community to help you and uh, I, I like to see Dovetail um, supporting the community uh, encouraging the community and, and getting the community to actually come in and, and, and let them use some of their resources. The community can do a lot of things. There's people all over the world who like playing Train Sim World, and I believe that a lot of us can help with the development of future pro pro projects and products. And you know, I think it's one of the biggest uh, complaints I've seen so far uh, as far as people coming from Train Simulator, um, which is a different sim. <laughs> um, uh, when they come over, like, man, I wish I could do more. I wish I could download more mods. I wish there were more routes. And the reason why Train Simulator has so many more routes is because the community has their hands on it. Um, the community can go through and make their own routes. They can go through and make their own trains, make their own sound mods, things like that. Now, people are doing some of these things on Train Simulator World, uh, but not to the same extent as Train Simulator. All right, we're finally at the end of the tunnel. I can see the lights at the end of the tunnel, as they say. It was a pretty long tunnel, I have to say. I mean, we're only going 25 miles per hour and uh, just over the speed limit. This thing's getting real picky on me, man. Killing my XP right now. But, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's a decently decent-sized tunnel. It reminds me of the tunnel on the, uh, what's the name of that London route? I forget the name of it. Not not the Baker Lou line, the other one, the blue one. Anyways, it reminds me of that tunnel. Uh, it goes on the ground for a, a while. We were under there for probably maybe two, three minutes at this speed. Oh, and the speed limit just dropped on us way down so we're gonna pull the power back I'm not gonna use the brakes just gonna let it bleed off we're still climbing you see the river kind of breaks off to the right there now and we're gonna stay over here in the mountains oh that's a nice little mountain road right there look at that 180 degree turn over there Yeah, man, this route's beautiful, man. It's just so much to see. I'm, I'm hoping the whole thing is like this. I don't know. I personally do not know. Uh, we still have 27 miles, 26 miles to go, so a long way to go. Right, we got a cool little uh, rock portion coming up here. Another little canyon. Very unique feature. Got rocks on both sides and the highway up on top.
ladies and gentlemen, as the train is approaching, uh, we are actually just reaching the halfway point of the Cane Creek subdivision. And uh, as you can see, this is basically what it looks like kind of throughout the halfway section of the track. There's not as much high uh, mountains, more uh, some grassy, dry, desertous uh, vegetation. It gets a little bit more flat. Um, but there's still a few slight elevation changes and gradients and things like that throughout the middle. Uh, so far, the fastest I think we've been able to go uh, within the speed limit is about 35 miles per hour for a very short period of time. But mostly, uh, this section of the route has been around 25 max miles per hour. So pretty slow, uh, but there's a lot of, um, you know, S turns and things like that. A lot of, um, you know, whenever you're dri driving a, a really heavy freight train, you know, you can't expect the speeds to get too high. But I believe in this second half of the route, we should see some faster uh, speeds uh, getting us to our final stop in Thompson. So I'm um, definitely looking forward to that because as you get to this middle section of the route, you know, it kind of gets a little less interesting. It's a little less scenic. You can kind of see... Uh, some of the desert mountains out there in the in the distance, but you know not all that much to look out out here. It's kind of countryside, middle of freaking nowhere. <laughs> now I believe that on our left right now is an airport. I'm not sure what airport that is. It kind of looks like a control tower up there, uh, a very poorly modeled. <laughs> control tower uh but it's definitely a control air, air tower uh, airport tower um you know i'm a flight simmer so i know my my airports when i see and i know that is definitely an airport um it's, it's a very roughly modeled airport though All right, looks like we're finally approaching the main line. Uh, this is where things may get a little bit more interesting as we are approaching the end of the route. Uh, we should only have a few miles to go. I think it now turns into a two track, I believe. I may be incorrect there. Let's go ahead and check that next signal. Uh, and that is yellow. Nice, uh, interesting looking mountain out there, like little plateau there off in the distance. We got a yellow and a red, which means we can pass, but expect to stop possibly at the next signal. So we're gonna merge onto the main line track now. And actually I was wrong. It's still single track through here as well. We see there's another train, uh, probably waiting to leave the siding over there on the left, probably waiting for us. Um, but our go via point is right up there ahead of us. We don't have to stop. We just can drive right through it. But the good news is the speed limit, as we're busting through it right now, is finally about to go up. We've been driving about 25, 25 miles per hour. Yeah, there it is, 60 right there. So I can go full power to notch 8. Um, we've been driving about 25 miles per hour throughout this, the majority of this, this leg. Uh, and, and taking a look here at the route, you see we're at the top, the northern part of it. So... Uh, all of this was around 25 miles per hour, which again was the majority of the route. And then until we get to the main line section, which is right here, we finally get to go to 60 miles per hour, which is super nice and very refreshing. So, and then I don't know if we're even going to be able to make it. We're still on a uphill gradient uh, driving this direction at 0.8%. And even at notch 8, we're just barely gaining speed. So I'm not sure how fast we'll get to go. Uh, in this section, but um, we're doing all right. We're doing 40. Done. It feels way better than 25. I'll take it. So it's about a five-mile shot uh, down this main line section, at least to our waypoint. I would have to probably guess from end to end of just the main line is probably seven, maybe seven, maybe seven miles. Uh, this whole section. I do believe there are scenarios that have you running uh, from this part of the main line. So the other part of the main line, I think there's a siding on each side so you can run those routes if you want. A lot shorter routes if you're not wanting to drive this. Um, but I'll give you my opinion on this route so far. It's definitely freight operations in a train simulator. are definitely a uh, acquired taste uh, for certain people. Some people are interested in it. Some people are not. Uh, again, you know, when you get on freight routes like this, you got to expect to probably be driving slower speeds, especially if it's scenic. 
uh, when driving through scenic areas and tight turns and things like that, the speed limit is always going to be down, uh, especially if there's again, a lot of turning and a lot of gradients there. So I'm not surprised at all. Uh, I will say this kind of middle section definitely wasn't the most interesting. You know, there's a lot of, you know, there's mountains in the distance and mostly hills around you kind of spread out dry, grassy vege vegetation. Uh, so not the most interesting piece of the route. I think the most interesting parts of this route are going to be the start and finish points. Uh, the starting of the route was beautiful, man. I loved it. Loved driving through the canyon sections. Uh, and as you can see out far window right now, it uh, looks like it's going to get a bit more scenic as we get closer to where we're stopping at in about 3.4 miles. But uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, this is just kind of how it is. In route, it's not always going to be the most interesting thing. I think, honestly, the most challenging part is managing your speed. Uh, there are multiple elevation changes going up and down hills and things like that that you have to manage while, uh, while you're going. And uh, that's kind of the, the challenge. I think running this route southbound, so going starting from up here and going down, uh, we will be going downhill for the majority of the route and I think that at 25 miles per hour that would definitely be pretty challenging because you'd be on the um you'd be here on the uh the power handle in the dynamic brake section where you basically be using dynamic braking and sometimes pumping the automatic brake to keep you from speeding um and keeping the train under control but the route's definitely beautiful uh at the beginning and the end of it in the middle was kind of like eh you know it was kind of like you know whatever but um it's cool. I don't regret buying this DLC. I definitely enjoy it. I'll definitely be driving it some more. I don't know how often I'll be running from end to end. Um, it's a pretty long trip. And I know some of the scenarios can get up to 180 minutes. I believe some of the scenarios do have you doing some things in the middle. So today, we're just running from basically top to bottom or bottom to top. Uh, we didn't do anything in the middle. But I think some of the scenarios do actually have some, some more interesting things to do in the middle of the route rather than just running from end to end, which, you know... You like to do maybe every once in a while, but you don't want to do that all the time. At least I don't. Alright, well, I was only able to get up to about a 40 miles per hour, and now it's time for us to put the brakes on as we're driving into uh, a 30 mile per hour section. We're going to bust that wide open. There it is. Now switching over to the siding track. We're only a mile out. So I'm on the uh, minimum reduction of the automatic brake here just to get our speed down. There it is. Go ahead and release the brake now. And it continue to add some more power because we don't want to lose all the momentum we have. We're still going uphill, 1% gradient. We have a mile, 1.2 miles to go. So we're not trying to stop just yet. We got a red signal coming up in 1.1 miles. So I believe this is our final stop. Uh, we'll be stopping here at the siding at Thompson Spring passing east. And that'll be done for our scenario. All right, here we go. We're just under 500 yards away from our stopping point. I'm going to go ahead and pull the power all the way back to idle. And um, the terrain actually kind of leveled off and is uh, now going down. So that's going to be pretty interesting getting this thing stopped. So I'm just going to go like to 100% here. <laughs> Full service. As we're getting really close, we have a red signal just on the other side of that waypoint so we do not want to overrun by too much i think we have maybe a maybe a 50 yard buffer there looking okay i'm actually gonna pull the, the automatic brake back and we can see if we can let it just roll down the hill it's not that steep but i want to see if we can get, let it roll down the hill there's five we might actually stop all the way as you know when i when you put the brakes on especially the automatic brakes it sends the air brakes down the whole line of the train so it takes a while for all of those to release so i went all the way up to like 50 percent full whatever so i sent uh the had the brakes activating all the way down the train and so now they're still trying to you know deactivate again basically so here we are now and we'll go ahead and go to 50 percent and right on the marker yes sir we made it i think hold on maybe not <laughs> we didn't even stop all the way and they gave it to us. I'll take it. I'll take it. So that took us about an hour and 53 minutes uh, from end to end on the uh, the driving portion. This does not include 
the loading of the of the aggregates or whatever. So anyways, pretty cool. I can dig it. That's Cane Creek, guys. Uh, so let you guys decide whether or not you think it's worth it for you. If you want to try it out or whatever, you know, there's lots of other um, DLC for Train Sim World. If you're into stopping and going over and over, they got that with all the commuter services. If you like driving in, in the UK, whatever, they got that, you know. So it's nice to finally get some love over in America. I can't say yet if this is my favorite freight route for Trains in the World. Uh, I need to play a few more of the, c uh, the scenarios. Uh, after this, I still have to give it to Clinch, uh, Clinchfield for my favorite at the moment. Um, but it's not an extremely high bar to break. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video. I'm out.